All right, it says I'm live. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting this live stream. We're getting right into it. My my family wants to go look at Christmas lights tonight, so I have to uh, hurry up and get this done within the hour and take them to look at Christmas lights. Ladies, if you don't know, um, we don't like looking at Christmas lights. I just wanna I just wanna put that out there. I mean, you probably know, but in case you didn't know, we do not like looking at Christmas lights. That is all for you. Um, if you don't believe me, ask your, ask your man, like when you're about to go look at Christmas lights and be like, do you like looking at Christmas lights? And he will undoubtedly say, of course, I love looking at Christmas lights. And then you follow it up with a, really though? Do you really love looking at Christmas lights? And then at this point, you're going to learn a little bit something about your relationship because he's going to do two things. One, he'll be honest with you and he'll be like, no, really, honestly, I don't like looking at Christmas lights. I like the cheeseburgers and ice cream that we get from Francie Freeze after um, we're done. And I love the look on the kid's face when they say lights, but I would not drive around um, spending gas and wasting energy on road rage to look at sparkling lights. I am a girl. I'm a grown man. I do that for you and the kids. He will answer possibly that way, which means your relationship is good. He's honest with you. If he answers with, no, really, I like looking at Christmas lights. He's scared of you. You need to ease off a little bit in the relationship. And then if he says that, and if you're really still unsure, just follow that up with a, well, I don't really want to go look at Christmas lights. What do you think? Maybe we can just cook dinner and watch how fast he's on board with that plan and then tell me he likes looking at Christmas lights. A uh, couple announcements here to start this live stream. This is a live stream for all, all my beautiful baby boomers out there. I know that you call it a podcast because you don't know the difference between a podcast and a live stream, but this right here what we're doing tonight is a live stream, but I am announcing right now, this is going to be the most millennial thing I ever say in my life. I'm starting a podcast. Um, it is not going to be about the same things that I cover in these live streams. It's going to be different. It will not be live. Uh, the other day, I've been, I've been, Thinking about a podcast for a while, and weirdly, I have been told by people like, you should start a podcast, you do YouTube and all that, but I'm like, man, how much hiking and backpacking in Idaho can you talk about? Like, I don't have that much to talk about on a weekly basis. Um, so I've been thinking about doing a podcast, but I just never had the right idea. And then this past week, I watched, I always watched. I watch a lot of adventure documentaries. Um, my favorite film is Free Solo. My favorite filmmaker is Jimmy Chin. Like, this is probably not surprising you, given what I do. Um, and I watch a lot of nature adventure documentaries, like I think we all do, especially in this golden age of streaming. Like, they have become... Uh, more frequent, the budgets have gotten bigger. It's, we're really in a golden age for adventure documentaries. And so I watched 14 Peaks, immediately I had thoughts, so I text Brett. Brett, have you seen 14 Peaks? And Brett's like, yeah, what did you think? I thought it was a little rushed. And in my mind I was like, yes. And there's, there was the idea for the podcast because Brett and I kind of do the adventure documentary thing for a living. Like I definitely do. It's, it's not so much like I know that I'm not Jimmy Chin winning Oscars and stuff, but my primary, my primary source of income is creating videos from, uh, you know, snowboarding and stuff. You know what I do. And uh, so when I, when Brett and myself watch these adventure documentaries, we watch them, I think, with a pretty unique eye of, hey, 
you know, why did they tell the story that way? This is why he definitely didn't have the funding from Netflix when he started that journey. This is how I can tell. This is how money works. This is how he got it to the screen. This is the footage that he used. Um, we're going to be shooting the first episode, first two episodes tomorrow. The podcast is called Capturing Giants. It'll come out on a weekly basis once I get it up. Uh, it's gonna, after we shoot the first two episodes tomorrow, we're gonna cover 14 peaks and we're gonna cover the Alpinist. And then it'll probably take me two or three weeks to get everything set up because I gotta, you know, build the infrastructure, get the website up, get, get everything out onto the 8,000 different podcast platforms that you can listen to. And then going from there, we'll do a document, adventure documentary every week. Uh, on Thursdays, we'll release a video version on YouTube at noon, and we'll probably release the podcast version at 5 a.m. in the morning, so if you're on the East Coast, you can have it on your way to work, in your headphones, in your car, and I think it's going to be, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be a great podcast. We, I, so I think it's pretty evident if you watch these I mean, one thing that I'm very proud of is just in myself is that I do put in effort. I think you can see that in the videos, like I give things effort. So I really am going to put the effort into this podcast. I watched the 14 Peaks first and then I went back and I watched um, and read some of the things that some of the behind things that he and the filmmaker said at film festivals and things like that. I learned a little bit of behind the scenes to how they got that made, the technical side of it. And then I also went and watched the film again today and just went through step by step each process of the film. Having questions, I dove into each mountain and I compiled 31 pages of notes today just on the documentary. So we are really going to take a deep dive into this. We'll cover the story We'll dive into that deeper, just the actual feat of what it takes to accomplish what he did. And then we'll talk about what it took to, to turn that into a film and get it into your living room. And uh, I think it'll be fascinating. I, don't, I think it'll be fun. So watch for that. It's going to be called Capturing Giants. It'll come out in a few weeks. And trust me, you will know when it comes out. And when it does come out, make sure you listen and then leave, I think you're supposed to leave a review and tell eight of your friends um, when that happens. Second announcement, we got new shirts. Thank you to everyone who bought a hoodie. Um, <laughs> we did so well, Lana was like, let's do more colors of shirts. So there was just the, the, like the sand color shirt that we had in the store right now but we added the like what is this powder blue i don't know what kind of blue this is this is like a dark blue long sleeve that we got for the winter season we still got the hoodies and then we added because this color was super popular in the hoodies um we added it as a t-shirt so get your so here we are merch because you're a good person and you want to support I idaho local business if you didn't hear me, these are printed, made, manufactured, everything in Idaho. Your money goes to three separate Idaho businesses. Um, it doesn't go anywhere weird. So, uh, and it's just an awesome shirt. It feels really soft, recycled material. You know, I've given you the pitch. All right, enough with the annou announcements. Um, the pot, the stream should have gone into the ether, into the live. Uh, James Brooks, yo, what up? Almost forgot and missed this live. Definitely like the blue. Thank you, Warren. Yeah, a lot of people were saying <laughs> that they don't, they always miss these when they go live. And it's obvious that a lot more people watch these after the fact. And um, I think that's, that's partially my fault because it's like, I'm not, sometimes I'm just going live. I'm not putting it out on the socials. And uh, I'm not very consistent with my Wednesdays at seven. So I think that I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to be much more consistent and try to show up every Wednesday at seven, just with my schedule that isn't 
always possible. When I do the podcast, since it's not live, trust me, that will come out like clockwork. But let's pull up. So, yeah, the sawtooth. Got into the sawtooth in the winter. Uh, my third winter backpack ever. And I was in the sawtooth. I mentioned it in the video. Um, if you've been following along with the progression, uh, that's the one thing. Like, I don't... I don't usually say like subscribe to my channel and stuff like that, but you if you want to learn big backpacking, I am learning a lot over here. So definitely follow me along on the journey and and we can learn some stuff together. Uh, it's been fun. So I did the first two winter backpacks, the first one, and after the first two, I was like, I was I, I knew what was holding me back. It was tent and um feet and I just got the tent took a look at it just set it up back here I think okay this is gonna work much easier to set up obviously I won't be messing with it so much I mean that that hot stove hot tent thing I was just messing with too much and then on my feet I got the the negative 40 pack boots I got gaiters um, I learned a little bit more about gaiters after this sawtooth trip that I'll talk about and then I just went over to Willow Creek. I was there this weekend. 12 stream crossings you make in like the first mile and a half. And they are not easy stream crossings. That's why no one was over there this weekend. I dipped my feet several times up to my knees in the creek, just falling in, and my feet stayed dry. So that's going to be the video that I put out um, on Monday because I nailed my winter backpacking feet thing. And so the tent and the feet, and I was like, let's just get into the sawtooth. I looked up the temps. I was like, okay, it's three degrees tonight, but it's gonna be like 19 tomorrow. That's not bad, I can handle 19. And so I just went out there and I chose Iron Creek because like I said in the video, it's a real popular hike. A lot of people do it and it's, because, hey Gus, I will show you on Google Map why it's a popular hike. Boom, let's hit the map. Can I move this in? Like, do I need all my places to show you where I'm going? How is that working out there for me? Google Earth, anyways. Huh? This is Iron Creek. Oh, there we go, I kinda got it. You can see right there, and there's Stanley. <laughs> so here's Stanley here's the road to Iron Creek you can see how close it is and here's the trailhead which is this big 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 parking lot there's several like established campsites around here all around here so and then the hike itself is only about what was it 4.8 up to here right here at Sawtooth Lake that's 4.8 and about 1900 feet in elevation gain 1700 to 1900 feet 4.8 miles people do it as a day trip people backpack it people overnight it you can hit two lakes views are stunning you're that close to Stanley it's not hard to find this I had snow tires on at this point this trail over here this is the road um, 619 this had been, they'd been grooming it. So I wasn't even the first one on the trail that day. I saw people still the time I was out there. But November 26, I went and there was a lot less people and no one camped. So that was great. Um, that was my first time going from Iron Creek. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to stay, say. Uh, some of these places in the Sawtooth, just like this, I mean, it's, I, I've never gone to the Solitudes and, like, if I don't want to see people, I absolutely cannot see people in the Solitudes. It's really easy. It's just time you go. I know time I go, where I'm going, what I have to do, and that's just how hiking is nowadays. If you don't mind seeing people, if you're like my mom and you love seeing people, do this in the summer. Um, if you're doing a day hike, just know what you're getting yourself into. And then if you don't want to see people and do it like me, you can uh, you can start, you can do it in November because it's awesome. Um, 
All the drone footage that you see, by the way, I, I just, it's, I don't know how I'm talking about drones again, but I flew from Iron Creek Trailhead. Iron Creek is not in the wilderness. It's so funny. I haven't been getting so much um, noise about my drone flights recently. And I, I think it's because I'm doing like this very deliberate, here's the drone stuff at the start. You can tell it's at the start. And then I usually insert like a no, like the drone, if, if the trail's got a no drone sign, I put that in. And when I was making this video, I was like, I think I'm gonna add this drone stuff in the middle and I'm gonna leave that sign out. And I was kind of just poking the bear just to see what the Karens are up to out there. And sure enough, as soon as I posted that video. And uh, you know, I've said it before here, I have had the Forest Service show up and full tactical gear to my house about drone flights. So I dot my I's and cross my T's nowadays. I even plan all the flights before I go out on a map and keep that as a hard copy in case I get audited again. Um, but then the lady got mad at me for not making it clear enough where I was flying the drone from in the video. And it's like, come on lady, really? So anyways, I digress. I'm not gonna talk about drones anymore. This is not in the wilderness. The wilderness starts about a mile in, which you see in the video. Um, of course, there was a bear in the area. Ooh, do we want to listen to that? I don't, thank you. Um, get your wilderness permit at the beginning. 640 is the actual trail. Um, and then this is your, your view kind of the mile the miles up into it. <clears throat> Lots of wind down here. This is the Sawtooth Wilderness where it hits. I don't know where Marshall Lake is. Um, didn't see any tracks down that way. I wonder if that would be a good spot to try to head to. Is this Marshall Lake? What are you? Has anyone been to Marshall Lake? Because I don't see it. Is this Marshall Lake? Hmm. And Google Earth doesn't have any names for these. It's so fun. You could just play around in the Sawtooth forever, right? Like, what are these lakes? Let's go find those. Anyways, there is a Marshall Lake back there. And then there's these signs, so you will not get lost, like I said. Popular hike, easy. I make it look like I'm some badass in the back country of winter, but really I'm not. <laughs> I mean, the trail is, you can see people have walked on it. It's pretty, it was pretty easy to follow at this point. And right about here at this creek, there's this little wood bridge. Um, up to this point, it's really level. It's about two miles and then the last bit is where you start to hit these switchbacks you'll come to this so if you do this in the summer if you do this in the winter um, doesn't matter this this will cover both those but this is what I'm doing here is checking my Garmin because I can't tell but this looks like a trail down to a lake and this other trail is the trail up to Sawtooth Lake so you come to this this point, this leads you down to Alpine Lake. This continues up to Sawtooth Lake. This is what, 3.9 miles in? So you've done probably a good mile and a half of uphill at this point. Go over here to Alpine Lake, and Alpine Lake is, if you're camping, where you should camp. I'm gonna talk about where to camp if you're camping in the summer. But if you're camping in the winter, definitely camp at Alpine Lake. As you see in the video, there, and as I read in Scott Marchant's book, he actually mentioned that there was going to be a lot of wind, that it's really exposed up here, that there's not much camping. And he was right. There's not much room, especially in the winter. I don't know how it is in the summer, but especially in the winter, there's this one spot that's right here that we'll, we'll see in the beginning of in this video. Um, whew, man, if you're backpacking in the summer and you pick that spot, just, I mean have lemonade and cookies for everyone that walks by, please. Like you're, that's where everyone's just going to be. Um, and then I don't know, maybe that's a spot that didn't, I mean, this was all steep and nasty. Maybe people camp up here 
I had read there wasn't very good camping at Sawtooth Lake. I know people do it, but I mean, there'll be people spread out all around the lake in not very good spots. Um, and in the winter, you don't want to camp up there anyways because it's, it's gnarly, it's nasty. Uh, so where I camped is, I didn't plot out the, the turn, but you kind of turn down here or something. And where you end up is right here. This is where my campsite was located. Obviously, imagine that all in snow. Um, and you have this beautiful view of, let's turn this way, eyeball, turn this way. Whoa, thank you. Ooh, getting a different perspective. Oh, Google Earth is fun, isn't it? My uncle's like super into Google Earth. Bam, that would be your view. That'd be what you're looking at from down there. Look at that. Yeah. We like it. Ooh. Oh, I messed up. All right. Sorry. Let's go over here. Chill out, Google Earth. All right. So you'll be right here. Um, there was another campsite over here. No fires. No fires allowed in the Sawtooth Wilderness, to my knowledge. Um, I don't know of anywhere in the Sawtooth Wilderness. Yeah. No, because it... No, there are places you can have fires. You, I had fires at Barron Lake. There's a lot of places in the Sawtooth you can't have fires. These two lakes are two of them. So um, just be forewarned. You can't have a fire. So good luck with that. Um, there was multiple campsites. So there was a campsite right here. If you, you, know, if you go in the winter and this one's taken, uh, just continue down. This is Iron Creek. This is where you'll have to go. <laughs> To get water, I forgot. I was like, I set up camp here, and then I was like, oh, I was expecting that lake to be my water source, and it's frozen over. And um, I brought my Tenkara rod. More on that in a second. So I had to walk all the way across the down here to get water every time I wanted water. So um, there is a campsite closer to the water down here. It was a pretty nice campsite. Big, big rock that someone has had a fire under, so you can tell. Um, I have a shot of it in the video I'll, I'll point out later. But So those are your camping options. If you do this in the summer as well, there's a lot better camping. They'll be camping over here, camping over here. I'm guessing it's less crowded. Everyone's going to go to Sawtooth Lake. Most people just come down, check it out, continue their journey up, which we will do. So then the hike to Sawtooth Lake is just pretty brutal. Um, Let's get back into this video first. Yeah, all this is from Iron Creek Trailhead. I, I threw this picture up on Instagram and asked people if they could uh, name all the peaks. Someone just got it today. You can check out in the comment section below. Uh, no, on my Instagram. Uh, the way you figure this out, this far one on the left is the distinguishable one this is Thompson so you just are like oh that's Thompson work your get out of map left to right I think that's Alpine mm -hmm. in this shot you can see your journey from above um, get out of there if this little thing goes away this is the parking lot yeah yeah go away I won't move my mouse, I promise. Yeah. So that little thing down there, you can kind of see that big kind of bald spot down there. There's the parking lot. You can see the road in this shot. And then you're heading straight through the gap from here, straight through there, and up this way, and right into here is where Alpine is. This is where most people come and stop. Right down from that is this campsite. This is what the weather looks, looks like a lot up there. Um, that snow claw is awesome. It's only 25 bucks. Fits in your bag better than an avalanche shovel. This is my new tent, the MSR Access 3, big roomy thing. You can see it's got that six, like six points where the poles hits. And here's down the road that I was talking about where you got to get water. There's your view. 
And from here, we'll skip ahead. Let's hit the comments section. Let's see what's going on in the comments. Anyone in the comments? Probably, probably not. Oh my gosh, there's so many comments. Yes, those are my two problems in sleeping system, but I just got into backpacking myself. I've got a great video on your winter sleeping system, and then I definitely recommend, and I said this last time, Justin Outdoors, just how it sounds. Justin Outdoors. Um, Justin, if you're watching this, no, I don't know Justin. Um, he has been, like, you're like, what does John watch on YouTube? Uh, for his, for his, uh, <laughs> For his education, I watch this guy, and he's really good. He's up in Canada, and he's just got some great, so he's in, you know, crazy conditions, and he's just got some great tidbits. I love his presentation. I love the, prof you know, I do, you know, one thing I will say about myself, I think my quality is pretty good. I like videos with good quality. I can tell when they're shitty. <laughs> he's got great quality videos. Um, so they're easy for me to watch. So if you're in, just getting into winter backpacking like me, then I would highly recommend checking his channel out as well as mine. Been on three high soul called money. Message retracted. All right. By the way, Gus is my cattle dog. I am Len. Cool, Gus. <laughs> I called you Gus again. Your videos make me want to go to the Sawtooth. Cool. The Marshall Lakes are tiny and lower down on the trail. Thank you, Isaac. I love Google Earth. So no fires in the, in the winter. That's whack. Yep, no fires. Um, any thoughts about ice fishing while you're out there? Just curious as I know you enjoy fishing. I don't know how to ice fish. I'm trying to get people to take me. If you ice fish, invite me. I'll come. Uh, I got a buddy named Scott. <sighs> if he watches this, he works at Micron. Scott, Mr. Perfect. I know, I know you ice fish on Lake Cascade. Take me with you. Um, no, and you know what's so funny is I was like, Sawtooth Lake is going to be uh, frozen over, so I'm going to leave my 10-car rod in, the, in my tent and hike up to Sawtooth Lake. And then I get up to Sawtooth Lake, and I'm like, Argh! there's plenty of spots to fish up there, even in the winter. So I was... I was bummed out. Um, drone shots are the best, yeah. Backpacking TV with Eric Hansen and Dan Becker are good too. I watch them as well. Yeah, those are the ones that every, I mean, Dan is the one that everyone knows, right? And, uh, but Justin's kind of the lesser known guy and I, I think he's better, which is, you know, it's not always about how many subs you have. It's, you know, sometimes the guy with the less subs is doing, working harder. <laughs> <laughs> to try to get up. He's working on the come up. I'd love to see you try ice fishing while standing 11 feet from your hole holding a Tenkara rod. Yeah, I'm going to show you, Isaac, where I was going to fish and, and we'll see. First live here, I'll be in Stanley in January or February. How possible would this hike be for someone fairly new winter camping? So, um, that's a good question. In January, February, um, no, you gotta be like a serious alpinist. Um, you gotta have your AVI training. You gotta have, you gotta be ready to deal with negative 30. I would say, um, you're going to have to have specialized gear. You're going to be hiking in crazy amounts of snow. That's why I did it in early November. Um, so yeah, this hike is not gonna work in January or February if you're new to backpacking. In fact, I'm not at the level to backpack in January or February. The, the level that I'm at, here's what I would suggest you do if you wanna, if you wanna, and you're probably just talking about hiking, right? I mean, you, you take snowshoes, I don't know. That's, it's gonna be tough. How possible would this hike be for someone fairly new winter camping? I mean, you could probably hike it if we have a nice day. You never know, January or February. 
you better have some serious snowshoes and, and some crampons and get up there and get down. And I would definitely recommend knowing your way around avalanches. There was one right across from me as I was leaving. Um, so yeah, if you want to actually try a hike and a camp, there's two options that might be better. One is the hike to, come on, come on, John, Stanley Lake. So Stanley Lake is, you know, level with Stanley, which is what, 7,300 feet, but Mount McGowan's over it. A lot of people snowshoe out to it, a lot of snowmobilers out to it, and you're hiking along like a road, or not hike, you'll kind of, you'll snowshoe out along a road, and then you can camp there. That's, that's, and that, they allow fires there, so you can have a fire. That's probably number one. Like, if you want to actually camp, that's where I would go. If you want to just hike, you can do the hike to Redfish and back. Um, those are the two easy ones that you can do. But, yeah, if you're going to go out and you're going to do this in January or February, I mean, have your head on. Have your head on straight. Know what you're doing. Coldest place in Idaho, and I don't know if you've seen. We're pretty far north. Uh, so, yeah, just have it together. Um... I do have snowshoes. I hate using them, by the way. People are like, why didn't you have snowshoes? I've got them. I've got plenty of pairs. I hate using them. You know how hard it is to, like, walk by, set, I mean, because I got that camera. It's like, you set up the tripod, walk by in your big snowshoes, and then just turning around, like, turning around in them sucks. So if I don't have to use snowshoes, I won't. Let's get back to it. So, um... And yeah, I, I mean, Alpine Lake, if you're gonna, if you're gonna try, you can, hiking in January or February, you can always try Alpine Lake and then see how you do. It's definitely much harder this last mile. You can see it, it's on this ridge. It's much harder. It's pretty tough getting down, tough sledding. Um, literally, you're kind of on your butt sledding. So this is a mile and I think you gain, I think there's like 500 feet up. But it, it's tough, and it's straight up and down. And, like, you could hike definitely to here, it probably, in January or February, and look up. But here it's going to get tough. This is switchbacks. And then this part is the, is the part where I'm like, whew, know what you're doing. And the avalanche that I saw that you hear in the video that's in the end, I was walking this way. And I heard it first, and then I looked, and it was coming down right here along this little, uh, I believe that's a couloir right there, just right down into this pile of snow you can already see. So, I mean, right across from you. I wouldn't be surprised if some stuff rips down here um, as well. Uh, yes, and everyone who said Sawtooth Mountain Guides, if you want AV training, Sawtooth Mountain Guides in Stanley is great. It's going to cost you like 500 bucks a class, but if you're someone like me, um, I'm definitely planning on taking one. Trying to get them to trade me some like photos and videos of my experience taking it for that class, but we'll see. So anyways, I took crampons up to Sawtooth Lake. They were in my bag. I used them on the way down. It really helped on the way down just so I wasn't eating it. If you go to Sawtooth Lake, I heard a lot of people in the summer stop here thinking this is the lake. This pond is not a lake. Do not stop there. Uh, keep going. And then right here, you'll pop up, and here is the lake. Let's show you that part of the journey. Yes, yes, this is me explaining everything I just explained. Thank you, John. So here is the hike up to Sawtooth Lake obviously beautiful so this view is obstructed but right over here in these clouds you can see stanley if it's a clear day so that's where you're at in the world you hike up and over this little ridge obviously a beautiful view of alpine lake can i just say i thought alpine lake was much more stunning than sawtooth lake i didn't get to see sawtooth lake and all its grandeur because Cloud cover, obviously, like you can see here. All right, Isaac, I wouldn't fish right here. I'll show you where I would fish. <laughs> so everyone comes and they stop here. And this is where like the, the trail that was hiked out 
finish. So I, I had a pretty easy, not easy, because going up is hard. But I had an easy time finding my way. I wasn't planning on that. That's why I had it plugged into my GPS. But there were people that had stomped out that trail, that track, up to this point. Here is the place you would obviously stay if you were at this point in the... Uh, and you wanted to stay here in the summer, but like you're talking the trail is right here. This is where everyone's going. That's where I'm standing and talking. So, and the wind comes off, like I'm pointing out, just up this channel here. So, this is me starting my journey around this way. And this is actually, I had it mapped out because this is where I wanted to go. I read. And if you go in the summer, this is what I'm talking about, that this lake over here is where you should stay. And the lake, let me just tell you right now, the lakes without names in the Sawtooth are the best. They're the best. They're my favorites. If they don't have a name, there are so many lakes in the Sawtooth that are unnamed, that people don't go to, and that have just crazy beauty that you don't see in photos or anything. So I heard that this little area right here, I mean, I didn't make it. Where I got stopped was actually right here, um, which I'll get into in a second. But I heard like up here is better camping. You start getting better camping and better backpacking up here. Definitely down here, you're looking, um, if I can turn this stupid camera again. Turn the camera. You know, if you saw my previous uh, sawtooth video, I believe like over here is, yeah, here's Barren Peak. So you'll remember that the, the one I did in the fall with the boys was through here and I think around through here. Here's Barren Lakes over here and through this, yeah. So you can see here, I would, Earlier in the in the season, that video I went through here, up through here, and down through here, and out to Grand Jean and the Sawtooth Lodge. With this one, you could do something very similar. You can go from Iron Creek, come out here, and then take this trail down and meet up with uh, Sawtooth Lodge, just like we did that last trip in the summer. You know, we had the boat ride across Redfish Lake. Maybe you don't want to take that boat to Redfish Lake. You want to see Sawtooth Lake. And you don't want to deal with as much of the crowds in the summer, okay? If you don't want to deal with as much of the crowds, get up early. Go to Iron Creek. Hike up to Sawtooth Lake. Continue past Sawtooth Lake. Stay at Lake 8271. And then either go back the next morning, although you're going to have a lot of people on your way back, or this hike was stunning, you can see. Make it a, if you have a buddy, just do this shuttle. It's a pretty easy shuttle. It's like a 30 mile shuttle. Um, and go all the way to Sawtooth Lodge in Grand Jean. Park, someone park at Grand Jean Campground and someone park at Iron Creek. And that's a you know, 30 minute drive on a really nice, on Highway 21. There you go, you can see it right there. Bam, bam. Don't tell me these things aren't worth it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't make it over there because, as we can see in the video again, no one stamped out this trail. In fact, on my way back, I was seeing people like coming towards me because they were like, ooh, we should go over here. And they were just like stuck. It's like, uh, they were just following my tracks. It was pretty funny. Um, Look at this dedication. This is how stupid I am. You can see my footprints here because I didn't want my, I wanted fresh snow for this shot. It took me like five minutes to do this shot, to do the footprints this way, come back around and hike this way so that in my stupid brain, um, you could see fresh snow and you can actually see how thick it is because this is the best shot to show how thick it is. This one, it wasn't very thick. This was the easy part. Kind of get a glimpse of the wind. Isaac, this is where I would have fished. Right here. This is my rock. This is actually what I'm doing in this shot. I'm like 
I am just punching myself in the face. Like, ah, this is my fishing spot right here. I don't even want to go down to the end. I want to just sit on this rock and I want to fish for the rest of the day. And, uh, but I had left my Tenkara rod, which weighs not even a pound, back at camp. Because I was like, ah, it's going to be frozen over. I don't want to carry the extra weight. Really dumb. Really dumb. And then there's no trail. You're on the side of the mountain there. You're up to your waist in snow. It's about a mile across the, the lake. So I'm doing a whole mile here. I can't even set up the camera and, you know, go pick it up, turn it around. So you can't, you don't, I don't have many clips of that. Um, this was like the one spot towards the end where there seemed to be a little beach where I could finally like shoot myself walking it. And then um, that's looking back. So you can see like right there is where I came from. And yeah, I think I started this at noon and then I got to this point on the other end. It was 2.30, I believe. And again, you know, I'm planning a couple trips in January, like a, uh, an Hawaii trip and stuff like that. And people are biting off these, these, these miles, these summer type miles, you know, 10, 11 miles in the day. Um, I, move, I move much slower than that. You're just at less daylight in Idaho, a lot less daylight um, during the day, so don't forget that. And it's cold, so you're probably not going to want, I mean, the coldest part of the day is what, 7 a.m., maybe a little bit earlier, but in the morning is when it's the coldest part of the day, so my guess is you're probably not going to hop right out of bed when it's 10 degrees outside, you know, in the summer. I can hop out of bed at 5.30 a.m., no problem. It's nice and warm, the sun's coming out, I'm good to go. But in the winter, whew. So you're hopping out of bed a little bit later. I hop out of bed like nine. I'm awake at like seven, hopping out of bed more like eight or nine, um, just because of the cold. And then you're talking darkness, darkness. Darkness, Charlie Murphy, Chappelle Show, anyone? You're talking darkness, starts getting dark around 4.30. I mean, especially in Stanley, it'll be, it'll be dark by five. I mean, really dark. And again, and like the summer, unlike the summer, you're talking darker nights because you don't, you can see the cloud cover going on here. And uh, you don't want to be out at night in the winter, especially, usually. So just be wary of that. As you plan winter hikes, that's one thing that I've had to plan. It's like, okay, I've got five, six hours through ankle deep snow that I can hike today. They're just going to be shorter trips. Um, and then from there, you just head back down. There's Barren Creek again, like I was talking about. You can go to Barren. You just head back to Iron Creek, take crampons. Can we see Stanley here? That was the purpose of my shot, yeah. If you look really closely, there is Stanley. You gotta like zoom in, but it's right there. That is like at the top starting to come down from Sawtooth Lake. This is Alpine Lake from above again. Alpine Peak, that's a jump cut. Yeah, I do jump cuts, all right. This is that other campsite I'm about to, I cut it so people couldn't see the fire, see? But you could see, yeah, depth of field, so much tona. Um, yeah, this is the site, you could see this is where someone put their fire, this is like where you would sit. This is the one down by the other end, what, closer to Iron Creek. People have seen, that, you know, there was a sign that there was a bear in the area, and I've had people, I saw on Instagram like a, this year, um, someone was like, I saw a bear on Iron Creek, so they are there. Beautiful, and this is why you winter backpack, people. Can't get this. A lot of people can, can look at a sunset over Alpine Lake, but I was like, woo, when I saw this. It's like, who gets this freaking view? 
like all the investment into this winter backpacking thing was just like so worth it in this moment. Um, you know, as I got the one day where the clouds cleared and I could see the mountains and I could just watch the sunset at 4.30 or whatever it was, five o'clock. And then, yeah, uh, this is me packing up my gear. If you ever, that little, uh, that clothes foam pad, if you, if you watched like how I set up my winter sleep system, it's really helped it, man, I, I love my setup right now. I'm really getting pretty dialed in. It's nice to have when you're putting everything away and you're, you're trying to organize your stuff before it goes back in the bag. Just another use for something like that. You can also use sit on. This is the tent, the new tent and how it packs up and you can see and you just come out. This is about the point where I heard the avalanche. Right there, and I had a wide lens on, so I couldn't I couldn't shoot it, and avalanches happen quick, so I just enjoyed it. And there you have it. There's the video. Did you learn something? I hope so. Ooh. Always love the alpine glow. Hell yeah. These shots are amazing. Thank you. How much further is the unnamed lake from the from Sawtooth? It wasn't far. Well, one, it's. I mean, let's just try to look at it. I think it was a ways down. Do I have that book? It's right. Are you right there? Hold, please. All right. We have Scott Marchant's book here to guide us. Everyone's got his books, right? The grandfather of Alpine Creek. I don't want that, Scott. Oh, is this painful? There's Alpine Lake. He didn't have this direct. Oh, that's the Redfish Lake Inlet. I don't want that. Here it is, Sawtooth Lake to Lake 8271. Wow, it looks a lot farther than I thought. Uh, it's difficult to easy, but if you're talking from the point where I was standing before I crossed across the lake, so when you first come to Sawtooth Lake, it is 2.3 miles to that unnamed lake. So... From here to here is 2.3 miles. Now it's only 400 feet of elevation gain, so it's it's easy. Um, cautionary advice: Snowfields often linger in the shaded narrow canyon beyond Sawtooth Lake, and it is best to hike after they have melted. I'm going to disagree with Scott. Don't hike after they melted. Stay there right when they haven't melted because no one will be there. It's the best time to do it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, usually by late July. So if you go do this in early July, bet you you had that lake pretty much to yourself. Just scrape away some snow. Although this hike is easy from Sawtooth Lake, you will meet, need to be in excellent condition to complete the hike in one day from Iron Creek Trail. Yeah, it's a it's a doozy. And then you're gonna you're, it's another 8.2 miles and 3,000 feet of elevation loss to the Grand Chain Trailhead. So remember how I was talking about making that a through hike? You're gonna go uh, another. 8.2 from this lake down to Grand Jean Campground. Or this would be Grand Jean Trailhead. Yeah. Yeah. Where is the lodge? That's the lodge? Nope. Nope. There it is. You will have to come all the way over here. Bam. Good question. Love me a good question. 
doable-ish. So that would make it a 14.6 mile round trip. Yeah, or three, 14.6 plus 14.8. I mean, from Iron Creek, if we're talking the through hike to Grand Jean, it would make it a, yeah, yep, 14.6 around there, yep. That avalanche sounded so close. It was pretty close. I thought you were talking about the ones to the right of those lakes. How much, I don't know what that means. I thought you were talking. Snowshoeing is like hiking with your feet tied together with a 16 inch piece of rock. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like snowshoeing. And I'm going snowshoeing with my lovely special lady to an Idaho yurt on Sunday. So, yay. No, that's a really cool trip. That I do like snowshoeing with that. It's like a nice, easy little snowshoe extravaganza. So I have a video on that too, on hiking at the, to those yurts, but. Man, we nailed this live stream, didn't we? What'd I say? I told Sarah I would be done by eight at 7.51. I feel like we learned a lot. I feel like we talked a lot. I feel like I got a lot of good information in there. Um, don't forget about the, the podcast. If you came in late, I'm starting a podcast. It's called Capturing Giants. We're going to watch and review adventure films. First film will be 14 Peaks which is awesome. It's on Netflix. Go check it out and then join us for the, the podcast in a couple weeks when it comes out. You can watch it. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Take my family to see some Christmas lights. As always, thank you for watching. Oh, one final thing. I do. <laughs> if you're still with me, you're the person I want to talk to. Um, all right. I'm doing the honeycomb loop. Someone in the last live stream said, are you getting into the Oahis? I am getting into the Oahis. I'm getting into the Oahis with another buddy of mine who, his name's Andrew. He was, he did a live stream with me. He's like a, a doctor or something. Um, the 8th, 9th, and 10th of January. It's called the Honeycomb Loop. It is 17 miles through Painted Canyon and some of the Oahis most beautiful country. It is rated a 9 out of 10 difficulty. So it is tough. If you are a adventurous person that has their winter gear dial dialed in and you're like, hey, I want to come. I want to try. Um, Instagram. Direct message me on Instagram and uh, I'll send you the deets and uh, you can come along. So, all right. That is it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.